born of an HBCU by Keila A. Boos. There are those of us who were born of a time almost forgotten, a time separate and unequal, a time of pride and prejudice, a time of heritage and history, of toil and turmoil, of triumph and transcendence. There are those of us born of historically black colleges and universities. We are Grambling, Lincoln, Howard and Fisk. We are Spelman, Clark, Morris Brown, and Morehouse. We are Hampton, Howard, Virginia Union, and Norfolk State University. We are Alcorn in Alabama and Jackson State. We are Talladega, Tougaloo, Tuskegee, and Wilberforce. We are so many names and so many places spanning 200 years of enlightenment, illumination, inspiration. These great halls of academia educated the great minds of our ages. W.E.B. Du Bois, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, Martin Luther King Sr. and Jr., Thurgood Marshall, Kwame Nkrumah, Mary McLeod Bethune, Toni Morrison, Spike Lee, Oprah Winfrey, Kamala Harris, and more. There are those of you who forgot. Then there are those of you who were persuaded to believe that the HBCU became irrelevant and the great men and women, alumni of these stellar institutions are great despite their HBCU. Some of you forgot, dismissed, ignored the stellar institutions themselves, which educated so many when the doors were closed elsewhere except those of us who were conceived and born of them, those of us who drew first breaths in the company of those learned men and women, those of us nurtured by the poets, physicists, psychologists, biologists, botanists, linguists, jurists, actors, artists, musicians, and educators of the historic halls of academe. We know why. We have a passion for the poetry of Langston Hughes and the art of Elizabeth Catlett. We know why we are inspired to craft an argument in homage to Melvin Tolson or excavate historic achievements in honor of John Hope Franklin. We know why we are fascinated by the engineering wizardry of April Erickson and the mathematical genius of Katherine Johnson. And we know why we enjoy the first of the spring to plant an heirloom rose and find it fascinating that the mind, our minds, have the capacity to envision light years of exploration, and build rockets to the moon. Yes, we know why we can and why we do. We are born of an HBCU. My inspiration for this poem came after teaching an English class a few years ago. It's a love letter to the institutions which nurtured and sustained me. If it were not for them, I may not have existed. My parents were college sweethearts at Alcorn AMN College, now Alcorn State University. After they graduated, married, and earned advanced degrees, they taught at Grambling, where I came into existence and where my godmother is still today. I attended the kindergarten in the laboratory school at Alabama State in Montgomery and had my first job as a research assistant on gifted studies to Dr. Yvonne Miller at Norfolk State the first black woman elected as a state senator in Virginia. My inspiration to record this poem now comes after the momentous investment in and recognition of the significance of the HBCU by philanthropist Mackenzie Scott, who donated almost $2 billion to several HBCUs around the country recently. This monetary recognition will send a signal worldwide to investors, donors, and others that the HBCU is fertile ground to sow every type of seed. While I've studied at many different types of institutions, the HBCU is singular in its mission to educate those of any background, but particularly the student of African American heritage to prepare the future scientists, leaders, artists, those of any discipline to further the achievements of the human race. This is my homage to historically black colleges and universities. <laughs>